Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PL SQL developers. This video is a continuation of previous set of video where we have learnt about what is constraint, what, what are the types of constraint. As a continuation of that, in the previous set of videos, we have learnt about not null constraint, unique constraint, primary key constraint and foreign key constraint. As a continuation of that, in this video, we are going to learn about what is check constraint and its related concept. To start with, first let us understand what are the types of constraints available in Oracle. So here is the list of constraints available like not null, unique key, primary key constraint, foreign key constraint, check constraint and reference constraint. In the previous four videos, I have already covered in detail about not null, unique key, primary key and foreign key constraint. In this video, we are going to learn about check constraint. In the next video, we are going to learn about what is ref constraint. To start with, first let us understand what is check constraint. So here is the snippet from Oracle documentation which talks about what is a check constraint. As you can see here, a check constraint let you specify a condition that each row in a table must satisfy. Basically using a check constraint, we can enforce a row level or a value level rules. That means using check constraint, we can make sure that only a valid values get inserted into the table. Let me show you a few examples for a better understanding. For example, I want to ensure that the age column always contains a positive number. Using check constraint, we can enforce that all the emails getting inserted into an email column is in a valid format. Using check constraint, we can ensure that the salary column always get inserted with a positive value. Again, using check constraint, we can enforce that the start date what we are going to insert is always less than the end date value. And again, suppose if you have a gender column and you want to make sure that only a valid gender value should get inserted, then we can use the check constraint. Here is another example. Using it, I can make sure that the minimum stack quantity which I'm going to insert into the quantity column is always greater than or equal to 10. Here is one more example. I can make sure that the rating column always get inserted with the values between 1 and 5. Now that we have learnt about check constraint, let me quickly show you an example for better understanding. So as you can see here, I have a table called T underscore EMP, which has four columns like employee number, E name, gender and date of birth. I have already defined the check constraint on this gender column to ensure that I'm inserting only a valid gender values like male, female or others. Anything other than this, if I'm trying to insert, I'll get an error. Let me show you the first insert. I'm inserting employee Ravi with gender as male. The insert, the data got inserted. The second employee that is Nila with gender as female, I'm trying to insert, it got inserted. Let me insert the third value, third employee like Varu with gender as others, it got inserted. However, if I'm trying to insert the fourth employee Kavin with gender as ABC, I'll get an error call check constraint violated because in this case, the constraint is not allowing values other than male, female and others. Anything other than this, if I'm trying to insert, the constraint will violate and the insert will not go through. Let me show you another example. The fifth record, Devi with gender as XYZ, I'm trying to insert. So here also we'll get an error saying that check constraint violated. So basically using check constraint, we can ensure that only a valid values get inserted into the table. Now that we have learned about what is check constraint, now let me show you how to define a check constraint on the table. Now let's see how to define a check constraint on the table. Since I have already created the table, let me just drop it. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just creating a table called T underscore M with four columns like employee number, E name, gender and date of birth. The table is created. As you can see here, I have, I'm not creating any constraint on this column. It's a plain table without any constraint. Now I'm trying to insert five records into this table. Like you can see Ravi, Nila, Varu, Kavin and Devi. And the genders are like male, female, others and ABC, XYZ. As you can see, all the data got inserted. Like even there are values like ABC and XYZ in the gender column. However, this is not expected. Using check constraint, we can enforce that only a valid values get inserted into this column. Now let's see how to define a check constraint on this table. Okay, since I've already created, let me just drop it. The table is dropped. So the one way of defining the check constraint is as part of the column definition. You can see here, as part of the gender column, I just mentioned the keyword check followed by the gender column in a list of valid values. This is one of the way to define the check constraint. Let me create this table. So now if you can see the table is created. Now let me try to insert a value like four and Kevin. It is not allowing because we just mentioned like male in a 
init cap format however i am trying to insert a mail in a upper case so let us just make it as init cap now the data is inserted however if i am trying to insert another value let me try to insert 5 let's say a b c with gender as a b c i'm just trying to insert a value now since this a b c is not part of this list i'm getting an error called check constraint violator right now let me show you another way so this is this is one of the way to define as part of the column definition we can just define the check constraint now let me show you one of the way of course that is also the column level definition but a slight change in the syntax let me just drop the table table is dropped as you can see here here also i'm just trying to define the check constraint however additionally i'm i've just mentioned a keyword like constraint followed by constraint name so this is the name of the constraint which you are giving which is actually missing here we, we didn't explicitly specify the constraint keyword followed by the name however in the second method i specified the keyword constraint and the name for the constraint in fact both these methods are exactly one and the same the only one difference is in the first method since we didn't specify any constraint name oracle will automatically create a system defined constraint name however in the second method since we mentioned the constraint name this user defined constraint name will be used for our constraint now let me create the table now the table is created this is the second method let me show you the third method of creating this constraint let me drop this table the table is dropped so in the third method if you see the same definition however i specified it as part of the table definition see, you can see the difference here that in the second method the definition goes as part of the column along with this column definition at the line number 15 along with the column definition here itself we are specifying the constraint definition however in the third method after all the columns are defined like employee number e name gender date of birth once all the four columns are defined at the end of the table definition we are specifying all the constraints so this is at a table level defined table level definition however functionally there is no difference whether you are defining in the first method or in the second method or in the third method let me just create this table the table will get created now let me show you the very last method so in the last method so let me first drop this table so what i'm doing i'm actually creating the table without any constraint as you can see here we are creating a table with four columns like employee number e name gender and date of birth as part of the table creation i didn't specify any constraint however after creating the table using the alter statement i am adding this check constraint to this gender column so first let me create the table the table is created now i am altering this temp table to add the constraint now you can see that the constraints are added so here is the syntax for your quick reference so this is the very first method so in the first method we are just defining the constraint as part of the column however i didn't specify the constraint keyword and the name for the constraint the learning is whenever we are not specifying a user defined a name for the constraint system will automatically create a system defined for the constraint so here is the second method so in the second method the only difference is i just specified the keyword constraint followed by a user defined constraint name the first method and the second method are exactly one and the same the only difference is in the second method we are specifying the user defined constraint name let me show you the third method what we have seen so in the third method in the second method the constraint is defined as part of the column level definition however in the third method the constraint is defined as part of the table level definition there is no difference in the functionality the, only the place of definition changes here okay now let me show you the fourth method of definition in the fourth method first we are creating the table and using alter table statement we are adding the constraint here so this is the fourth method in the third method we are adding the constraint as part of the table level definition in the third method we specified as part of the column level definition in the first method also we specified as part of the column level definition however we didn't specify any user defined constraint name in the second method as well as in third method as well as in fourth method using the constraint key we specify the user defined constraint name now let us see where to go and check the metadata related information in the constraints 
basically we need to remember two tables whenever we are working with the constraint that is a user constraint and the user constraint columns okay so let me just clear this and let me drop this table and let me recreate this table or let me do one thing let me just show you this in the first example so i've just dropped the table and i'm creating the table as you can see here we didn't specify any user defined constraint name here so now if you just go and check the user constraint you can see there is two constraint created one is a p and another constraint is c the constraint type c stands for check constraint and p stands for primary key constraint so this constraint p is created because we specify a primary key constraint on employee number uh, column and the check constraint is created on this condition on this gender column and this is because we created a constraint on the gender column that is a check constraint so that's why you are seeing two constraint another important thing here to note down here is the constraint name as you can see here this constraint name is a system defined constraint name which will typically follow like sys underscore c followed by a sequence number this is what the system defined name i am talking about in the previous examples whenever we are not specifying any user defined constraint name oracle will automatically define the system defined constraint name now let me show you in the next example okay uh, just before that I, I just want to quickly show you the next table that is user constraint column so here the user constraint column will tell on which column the constraint is created because in the previous table that is user constraint we have seen the name of the constraint and what is the type of the constraint in this metadata table that is user constraint column table we will know what is the column associated with which constraint for example this constraint name is associated with employee number column and this uh, ending with double seven this constraint name is associated with gender column so if you want to get all the information uh, you have to join both these tables that is user constraint and user constraint columns table to get all the information about your constraint now let me show you the second example let me drop it table is dropped now i am creating this table if you see here now we created the table with the user defined constraint name using this constraint keyword and followed by the name for the constraint right now now we'll see the metadata information so now if you see now if you see here the first constraint that is the primary key constraint is defined on this employee number since we didn't specify any user defined constraint name it was generated as that is the name of the constraint was generated as a system defined name however for check constraint we just gave a name that is a user defined name and this name is used as a constraint name for this check constraint this is the learning okay so basically just to sum up our learning in this two examples we just need to remember two tables one is a user constraint and another is a user constraint column user constraint will basically give us about the what is the type of a constraint and what is the name of the constraint user constraint column table will give us the information like on which column this constraint is basically defined so here is the query for your quick reference so basically we need to remember two column uh, sorry two table one is a user constraint and another one is user constraint column and uh, important thing is the constraint name and the constraint type because constraint type will tell what is the type of constraint we have defined for example in this example employee number has a primary key call constraint and gender has a check constraint and since we have defined the user defined or since we have given the user defined name so that name is actually used in the constraint name and the second table that is user constraint column this will basically give us information against which column this constraints are defined right now that we have learned about uh, what is check constraint how to define a check constraint and what are the different methods by which we can define the check constraint and then we have learned about where to go and check the metadata information now we'll learn how to enable and disable the constraint okay let me first drop this table right so now i'm just creating a a constraint that is the uh, check constraint on this gender table let me create the table table is created right now if you just go and check this user constraint table here you can see the uh, status of the constraint by default whenever we create the constraint it will be in the 
enable mode so we have two options we can go and disable or enable again for example uh, disabling is very simple you can just say alter table table name constraint followed by the constraint name if you don't know the constraint name you can go and check the metadata table and copy the same constraint name so let me execute this so now that the constraint is disabled now let me check the status of the constraint now if you see here we just disabled the check constraint let me just bring it here now if you see here we disabled the check constraint however primary key constraint is still enabled so again alter table table name enable constraint constraint name using this alter table we can re-enable the constraint now that i have enabled the constraint let me quickly check the data from the user constraint now if you see here both these constraints that is both the primary key and check constraint are in enabled mode finally to drop the constraint we can simply say alter table table name drop constraint followed by the constraint name let me just drop the check constraint so the constraint is dropped now let us check our metadata table user constraint now if you see here we have dropped the check constraint we have only the primary key constraint in the table so here is the script for your quick reference so after uh, creating the constraint using the alter table that is alter table table name followed by either enable or disable keyword constraint constraint name it will either enable or disable the constraint and finally to drop the constraint we can simply say alter table table name drop constraint constraint name so if you have learned something please like this video if you want any questions to be answered you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail id but before that you can check whether a similar question has already been answered as part of the subscriber question series or as part of the interview question series if you are not able to find your question here please write back to me i'll be happy to record and post as a new video if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video interview question still practical question and concept videos and thanks a lot for watching this video